All right, so having looked at the single responsibility principle, the next principle we're going to talk about is the open close principle, OCP. There we go. So in actual fact, in this demo, you're going to get two for the price of one. Not only do you get a description of the open close principle, but also what I'm going to show you is the implementation of a design pattern. However, that design pattern is not a gang of four design pattern. It's a pattern of enterprise engineering and it's called specification. So we're going to do uh, these two things together. We're going to look at the open close principle through the prism of implementing this specification design pattern. So let's begin somewhere. Let's suppose that you decide to make a website where you're selling different products something like Amazon, for example, and you want to allow your users to filter products by a specific criteria. So let's first of all implement the criteria. Let's suppose your products have different colors. So we'll have an enum here and that enum is going to have, uh, let's say the colors red, green and blue. Now, in addition, we're going to have different product sizes. So I'll have another enum called size and here I'll have small, medium, large and huge. There we go. So now I can define a product. So I can have a class called product and a product is simply a combination of the product's name, its color, as well as the size. So we'll have public string name, we'll have public color color, and we'll have public size size. There we go. So uh, may as well have a constructor for uh, this object and that's pretty much it. That's all that we really need to do. So now I'm going to define a filter. So I'm going to define a mechanism which will allow me to take a list of products and filter them by a particular criteria. Now let's suppose that I have a manager and my manager comes up to me and says, can you please filter? Can you please allow the users to filter the products by color? So what do I do? I do something like the following. So you make some sort of product filter and inside this you you make some sort of API which returns let's say a stream of products which satisfy a particular criteria. So here we can have a public stream. So I'm going to be using streams. You can use a list for example instead. So we can have a stream of products. So stream of product and I'm going to have this method be called filter by color. So we're going to take a list of products, a list of products like so and we're going to filter them by color. So here are the products and here is uh, the color that we want to filter by. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, it's actually rather simple. We return, uh, so we take the products, uh, we get the stream, and then of course we can just call filter with a lambda which satisfies the color predicate. So p goes to uh, p.color is equal to color. That's all that we need in terms of the criteria. So let's suppose we write this code, we push it to production, but then the manager, the boss comes back and says, well, actually, we also want to filter products by size. So obviously, you start doing some sort of co copy paste programming effectively, you copy this, uh, you uh, paste it down here, but instead of color, what you're now taking as a criterion is the size. And here you are checking that uh, the size is correct. So you're saying p dot size is equal to size. There we go. So now once again, you've had to jump into a chunk of code that you've already written, you've already tested, and you had to modify it. And remember the whole point of the open close principle is to be open for extension, but closed for modification. And we're performing modifications here. So the takeaway is that modifications of uh, code that that has already been written and tested is not great. But the boss comes back and the boss now wants to allow the users to filter by both color. And by the way, this should be size here, filter by size. The boss wants to be able to filter products by both color and size at the same time. So once again, we jump into the product filter and we implement yet another method. So this time round, we have a public stream uh, product and we call it filter by size and color. Okay, so this is going to take a lot of arguments because first of all, we'll take a list of products called products and then we'll take the uh, size, we'll take the color and of course the implementation of this whole thing is fairly obvious. So we take products, dot stream and then filter and then we check both of the criteria. So p dot size has to be equal to size and p dot color. Uh, let me actually uh, move this to the next line. P.color has to be equal to color. That's what you are expected to uh, implement typically.
if you were doing this sort of thing. Okay, so what is the problem with this code? The problem is that uh, this is okay for, let's say, two criteria. We have sizes and products. So we generate three different methods. Imagine if you had three criteria. Imagine if in addition to color and size, you also had price, for example. So now you would end up with how many? Seven methods if you wanted to have every intersection. So that is problematic. That is something that you don't really want to do. And also the bigger problem, the problem which the open close principle tries to solve is to say that you shouldn't be jumping into code that's already written. So you want code which is open for extension but closed for modification. You want some sort of filtering mechanism which is closed to modification after it's been tested, after it's been shipped to clients maybe because your clients might already be using a binary uh, snapshot of this code. You don't want to keep modifying it. You want to have something on the side, maybe an extra library or something. So uh, this is actually a problem you can solve. But before we solve this problem, I want to show you how you would actually use all of this. Uh, so let's have a demo class. Uh, stick a public static void main in here. So I'm going to make a couple of products. So first of all, I'll make a product uh, called an apple. Uh, an apple is green and its size is rather small. So let's make a, a variable for this. I'm going to call it an apple. Uh, then I'll make another product, which is going to be a tree, which is also green, by the way. So it's going to be color.green. And its size is going to be large. Okay, so let's make a variable for this. And in addition, I'll have a new product. Let's have something more significant. Let's have a house. A house, its color is going to be blue. And its size is going to be large. There we go. So I now have a uh, variable for a house as well. So what we can do is we can make a list of products. So list of product products equals the list of and then we'll just stick apple tree and house in here so we have all the products and then what we can do is we can try using that filter that we made so we make a product filter a new product uh, filter like so and then uh, what we do is we can for example find all the green products so uh, we can uh, print all the green products now I'm going to put old in here because then we're going to have a new fresh implementation. So how do we filter by uh, color? In this case, if we want all the green products, we say product filter dot filter by color. And then we specify the products we want to filter by. We specify the color we want to filter by. In this case, uh, the color is green. And yes, that should be products, not product. And uh, for each of these objects, uh, what we can do is we can actually go ahead and print them. So for each of the products, what I can do is I can say system dot uh, dot print line. I can print. Let's just stick a dash in here and uh, I'll put the product name is green. All right. So we're now using the product filter. Let's actually run this program and see that we're getting the results that we expect. All right, and as you can see, we're getting the correct results here. So everything is fine so far, except that we are violating the open close principle by requiring that whenever we make new filters inside product filter, we have to go and jump into a class that we already made. So you're probably wondering, well, how can we mitigate this problem? How can we build a better architecture? And we can build it using the specification pattern. So that's exactly what we're going to do right now. It's going to be a lot of fun. So first of all, I'm going to introduce two new interfaces. The first interface is going to be called uh, specification. So specification is a generic interface. It takes a type parameter T and it has a single method which returns a boolean which determines if a particular product satisfies a criteria. So we can say is satisfied. But in actual fact we're not constrained just by products. We're we can filter just about anything that we want and we can satisfy a particular criteria on any object that we want. So the object type here is going to be T. I'm going to call it item, for example. So that's the first interface that we're going to build. The second interface is going to be called filter. Once again, we're filtering T, where T can be virtually anything. It doesn't have to be a product. So in our demo, obviously, because we're working with products, it's going to be a product. But filter can work with anything. And here we're going to stick to the interface that we've been following so far, which is returning a stream of T. Uh, the function itself is going to be called filter. 
And here we'll take two things. We'll take a list of T, which is the items we want to filter, as well as a specification of T, uh, specification of T, which we want to satisfy. So you can see instead of specifying something like color or size specifically, we're making everything very generic and very flexible. So now let's suppose we want to build a color specification, a specification which matches a particular color. Here's how you would do this. You would say uh, class color specification, you would implement, so this is uh, going to implement specification of product. So here we're actually using the generic parameter, we're specifying that we want to implement uh, a specification of products specifically, we can implement uh, this particular interface, in which case we get the appropriate override. And here in the is satisfied, we need to check whether we are satisfying the color specification, but we haven't specified the color itself yet. So here let's have private color, color like so, and let's also have a uh, constructor which actually initializes the color. And now what we can do in is satisfied is we can return whether the item color is actually equal to the color we're looking for. All right, this is great. Now in a similar vein, something you can do is you can uh, build a size specification. I'm go not going to type this one out. Instead, I'll just paste it in here. So a size specification is just like a color specification. It's very similar construct in that you basically take the size as the constructor argument and then you have is satisfied which checks the criteria. So having uh, made both of these specifications we can now build an example which does pretty much the same thing. It filters the green products and gives you the green products by using this new filter. Now we haven't made the filter itself yet. So we have our old product filter, of course, but uh, that's not good enough. We now need a new filter which takes care of using the filters as well as the specification. So what would it look like? Well, in actual fact, the implementation of a better filter is very simple. We'll make a class called better filter. And this class implements a filter of uh, T. In our case, T is a product. So we're going to implement the filter of T interface and let's actually generate uh, what we need to uh, do in this case. So it's just a single method called filter. Notice we're taking a list of the items we want to filter as well as the specification that we want to apply. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, return the following. So I'll take the items, I'll get the stream, and then I will call filter on it. And here for each item, each product in actual fact, I just want to make sure that the specification that's being provided into uh, this filter uh, method is actually satisfied by the product. That's all that we need to do. So this is a very simple implementation of a better filter and we can actually start using it straight away down here. So I'll make a better filter And then I need to make a specification. So if I want to filter out all the green objects, for example, what I can do is I can write the following. So let's first of all, just copy the line which uh, prints green products new. So this is a new implementation. And now what I'm going to do is the following. So I'll say BF dot. And here I also have a filter method, but it's a different filter method because remember it now takes a specification. So it takes the products that we want to filter and then I can make a new specification. So if I want green, for example, I make a color specification uh, with uh, color dot green here. And so I have a stream containing all the green products and I can, for example, go for each and for each of the products I can pretty much do what I did uh, previously. So simply paste some of the existing code so that we get to see what's going on. So let me just run this just for you to see that it does in fact work. All right, so as you can see with green products new, we're getting exactly the same output as before. So everything works nicely. Now the upside of this implementation is that in, if you want additional filters, for example, if you want additional specifications, you don't have to jump into existing classes and modify them. You don't change their binary interface. You just use inheritance and implementation of interfaces. That's all that you do and it becomes a lot more flexible. Now the only thing that you might be wondering is how do we check that we satisfy uh, both color and size, for example. Now this is also fairly easy to do because what you do is you make a combinator. A combinator is something which combines things together. In this case, we need a specification which combines two specifications together. Nothing particularly difficult about this. So we're gonna make a class called and specification. I'm gonna 
keep it generic because it can combine any kind of specification. So it's going to implement a specification of T. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to refer to the first and second parts of the left and right hand sides of the specifications that you need to satisfy. Notice I've generated this tab here already, but we'll have private members for specification of T. Uh, let's call them uh, first and second. And then I'll have a constructor which actually initializes them both. Fairly obvious stuff here. And then of course what I'm going to do is when we check whether this is satisfied or not, I have to check that both the first and the second specification are satisfied. So I return first is satisfied item and second is satisfied item. That's all that I need to do. So now if I want to find all the large blue items, it's actually rather easy because let me show you how this works. Uh, system app print line, large blue items. We know there's only one item, which is a house. So we, we take better filter and we filter the products. And here comes the fun part. So we're using it, the combinator. We're using an and specification. And I'm not going to provide uh, the actual uh, generic arguments here. Uh, specification, there we go. But I am going to feed it both a color specification as well as the size specification with uh, size being large. And I seem to have made a specification there we go. So size large, we are combining both of these inside the end specification and then I can, I can once again do a for each here. So for each and I'll just copy the code that I have here for each like so is large and blue. There we go. So let's try using this combinator and seeing how we get uh, what kind of results we get here. And we're getting the right result. So large blue items, well, there's only one item, which is a house. So that's exactly what we get. So the takeaway from this example is, well, we learned about the open close principle. So open for extension, which means it's okay for you to go ahead and inherit things or implement interfaces, but it's closed for modification. At no point in time would you want to actually jump back into, let's say, a better filter that we made and actually modify it somehow because it's final, it's finished, it's correctly working. And if you want additional functionality, you have two interfaces. So you have specification of T for checking whether a particular item satisfies some criterion. And you have a filter of T for basically taking a list of items and returning only those items which satisfy the appropriate specification. And that is the gist of the specification pattern.